saying anything at present good afternoon. I just want to do a little piece for you. Can you hear that? Can you hear their cry for help? Our children, yes, they need us there. They need us to hold them. They need to learn. Can you hear their cry? Cry for help? I'm 11 years old. <coughs> and my name is Anne. I don't feel love, but I don't know who to tell it to. Sometimes it's hard to read. It's not that I can't. It's just that so many things are going through my head right now and I cannot talk to mommy or daddy or anyone. My friends love. They think I'm stupid sometimes. <laughs> but they don't know the fight that I'm going through. Everybody wants me to be perfect. But nobody is taking the time out to teach me how. Is there hope? Now that was the story that taught me about 15 years back when I entered the world of teaching. And it stuck with me because our children are much more than nine to three math, language, social studies. They need to know that the person that is molding them cares, have a listening ear, and is willing to show them how to go in to that avenue of using their imagination and to its fullest. The curriculum is good, it's wonderful, but does it cater for every need of a child? There is where reading and craft summer getaway come into being. There's a craft for reading. We have students, they can read. But they can read to themselves when they're reading a book or when they have to read a passage. But when it comes to read out loud, they're nervous. There are certain skills that are not there. Suddenly this child that you know has the ability to do something is now shaming you. Whereas we have others who are struggling. But because of society and how it's going, and they may never be able to see their name in the 90%, they withdrew. They get mischievous. They do things. The reading aspect of uh, this uh, camp for the past three weeks ventured into certain realms, focused from composition to comprehension to reading out loud. But an additional composite to that was having people come in to speak on morals, building self-confidence. Yes, we want our children to learn to read, but if they lack the confidence in self, then they will just keep reading to themselves. You see, once they have a high self-esteem, and once they're confident enough, then there is no barrier. There is nothing to be in the way. So in the morning time, instead of just having book, 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 we did reading. But more so, we had a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. We had a lot of oral interaction. To the point where they evaluated their reading, looking for at least 10 basic skills. Words pronunciation, accuracy, volume, pitch, confidence, projection, uh, contact, eye contact, etc. And they themselves evaluate.
situated their reading. So we had a before in which they did the individual reading and what you were seeing was the before. This is when they were just giving a book to read and that was the outcome. And I can tell you, in the three weeks, even if they're not capable of reading an entire book, I have seen confidence built. And I'm seeing effort being made to read more. The crap side of it is that, again, technology is good. But in one way, it is robbing our children and their creativity and their mind. Because now there's an app for everything. There's an app for you to take one dress off of the doll and put it on another. There's an app for you to change the blue car red. There's an app. So once you have your thumb finger, your index finger, you are capable of doing anything. But something is happening with metacognition that is making our children a bit stagnated and not seeing themselves progress beyond their maximum. There is where the crap came into being. And surprisingly, I wish it was longer, but it was amazing. And Miss Matre can tell you that it was amazing. The very first day, we had questions like, what is a needle? How do you hold a needle? We had students holding a needle like a pencil, as though they want to write. Now to you adults, you would laugh because you say, but come on, a needle? But in the world they're living in, the needle is not their friend. We have Google. And so that first day was really a motivation and an inspiration to continue. They loved it. It was challenging. We had some good days. We had some bad days. We had some very not good days. We had days when people cry because <laughs> They cried because a stitch was not in the right place. Or because they realized they wanted to do their particular thing, but they're afraid they don't know how to do it because it seems hard. In and out of the craft, and in our ending session, we had a police officer working along with us, Officer Timmons. Every day, he would come in and his role changes as he comes. Telling you about the police officer being here. One, we wanted to let boys know it's okay to learn to tap because some of our boys think it's just for girls. Two, building is for girls too. They think it's a man's work. So Officer Timet would come in and he would go around and he would even assist doing the sewing and so forth so they can see this is a police and he's sewing. The other the reason is that he was having sessions with our boys. Our boys need to know themselves, their roles, what is accepted socially, morally, ethically. And so he would have talks with them in groups about what is expected. He did so for, on two occasions planned, but then the boys, they decided that they will come with their topics. And of course, when you give them the opportunity to choose the topic that they wanted to talk about, everybody was for love. Everybody wanted him to talk about love. <laughs> to the point where when he came to have the session, uh, the boys they were saying they don't want the girls to hear what they have to talk about. <laughs> they people are to speak in private. Let's go out on the balcony. <laughs> it was a good chat. It was good because there is a male figure, and yes, we have someone with or without males, but nevertheless, we need to keep empowering our young men and little boys that are coming up in this generation. But just to give you a breakdown of what we did in three weeks with the crop. Needle, needle, treading the needle and securing the knot. That was the first thing. We touched on five different types of stitching from running stitch to back stitch to fishbone stitch, cable chain stitching, and French dots. Then we looked at two different types of crocheting using your fingers only. Putting away the tool so they use their fingers as you may go around. Two fingers, four fingers.
fingers. And some of them even got created by adding more to the two fingers, crocheting, just sitting. Now crocheting is a relaxation activity to clear in the mind because you just sit, you have to clear your mind and you have to focus. So one good aspect with that in relation to the reading, it, um, it's about attention span. You may notice that your child's attention span is not the way it should be at a certain time. Finger knitting or finger crochet helps with that because they need that concentration to continue. And as you can see, they did a lot of that. We looked at four different types of rugs or mats. That's the pum pum rugs, the yarn mat, the strip mat, the flat mat. We had our plastic bottle craft, our plastic bottle craft for the wall. It's a Coca Cola bottle, so when you drink your water or whatever, um, it's made truly from plastic bottle. We went into building, but the building was one little different. You want to build a house, no worry. But we have to link that to our language aspect, storytelling. So your strip mat must tell a story. So in front, it looks like a mat. It looks like a mat on the, in the front of it. The back must be able to tell you a story. The sun, the tree, the sky, the grass, the flowers. This was the first day task and it's not completed because they have up until tomorrow to submit that. So every day the task was to put a little to it to tell a story and then we had the building for the boys that want to build. They were given two books, one for planning and one for language. You must have a sketch. You must have an idea of what you're going to do. And when I looked at it, I must be able to say something like and make up a story from it or so forth, including the rock. So everything that they did has some sort of meaning to it. 